is your New Year's resolution to transform bedtime with your kids from chaos to calm, to just find a way to have more peaceful bedtimes, to find a groove or a consistency in the routine with your kids, or for your children to just go to bed or fall asleep at a decent time, this podcast episode is for you. We are going to talk how to transform bedtime from chaos, stalling, tantrums, I need you, don't leave, cries, to calm, to just children going to bed by breaking down one of the most common causes of bedtime struggles and is bedtime separation anxiety. If you are new to us. Hello, my name is Marcela Collier. I am the head coach of HIC Parenting Education Agency. And welcome if you are the first time on our podcast. I'm going to break down the concept of bedtime separation anxiety. I'm going to tell you a story on how my mom beautifully, she built a new habit for me because I used to deal with a lot of bedtime separation anxiety when I was a kid. We're going to talk about some don'ts and some do's. And at the end of this episode, you are going to leave with a more clear picture on how to make your New Year's resolution a reality in your home. So first of all, what is separation anxiety? Bedtime separation anxiety. This is a very common cause when it comes to bedtime struggles, but it's not the only cause. There is sleep anxiety that could be another cause. There is developmental things that could cause bedtime struggles. If you are in the middle of potty training or if your child is teething or if they have other stressors in their lives. The next day is their first day of school. There are many other reasons why children may struggle to fall asleep or to stay asleep. On this episode, we are going to take one of those reasons and we're going to break it down step by step and it's bedtime separation anxiety. So let me know if you relate to this. You say, okay, guys, it's time to go to bed. Maybe they wander a little bit around, but then eventually they do brush teeth. And it is a struggle to get them to go to bed. Or they happily go to bed as long as you are following them. But when it's time to say the good nights, the prayer is good nights, and then you're leaving, then hell breaks loose. And then they start asking for another sip of water. They start asking for the thing that they forgot at the kitchen table. Or they just call you and cry for you. And they seem inconsolable unless you are there. Well, my friend, if you relate to this story, then you might be dealing with bedtime separation anxiety. So what's bedtime separation anxiety? is basically the fear of being away from caregivers. Bedtime is the longest separation of a child's day, the longest one. So, of course, if they know that they're going to be away from caregivers for a prolonged time, even if you're co-sleeping, you're still kind of away in the sense of they don't know what you're going to do once they fall asleep. Maybe you go back to the kitchen and that anxiety of I'm going to be separated from my caregiver causes that bedtime separation, anxiety, that fear. So let's break down a myth. It is not that your children are giving you a hard time. It is not that they're inconsiderate of your needs. It is not that they're just defiant and not listening. They have anxiety. This is called bedtime separation anxiety. They fear to be far away from you, even if you are next door, even if you are at the other side of the wall. And especially if they know that you for sure will go away, maybe you have to work 
or maybe that's the time that daddy goes to work or maybe that they know that after you put them down then you go downstairs and their bedroom is upstairs then that could create that bedtime separation anxiety and then you might say Marcela but my child is seven I mean I get this when it comes to little toddlers, but can this really happen with an older child? Bedtime separation anxiety or separation anxiety, period, does not know age. I experienced bedtime separation anxiety when I was nine years old, and it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad in the sense that I was losing sleep. And I was having a really, really hard time going to sleep. And I'm going to tell you in a little bit how my mom beautifully solved it without punishment, without threatening to take anything away from me, without yelling, without even getting frustrated. She solved it so beautifully. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit when we talk about the solutions. So it could come at any age. It could come even if you're not leaving the house. The fear of being away from caregivers is a real thing. It's not that your child is defined. So when it comes to older kids, what could it be? Because yes, you're right in the sense that it might be more common for you to see a little toddler who's still breastfed to have bedtime separation anxiety. Well, for example, in my case... At nine years old, it was circumstantial. And when it comes to older kids, bedtime separation anxiety could be very circumstantial at times. So in my case was that my brother, he got very sick and he had a long stay at the hospital. I'm talking about two or three weeks. It was for a long, long time. So at the time, my mom was with my brother a lot of times. And in Colombia, you cannot just leave. Somebody has to be there 24-7. So she was spending the nights with my brother. And I stay at home with my abuelita, with my grandma. And she was the one in charge of my bedtime routine. Now, this was different for me because since I was a little baby, my mom was in charge of my bedtime routine. So these started to create bedtime anxiety of, number one, I knew that my brother was not okay. I was nine years old. I was very aware of it. I knew that my mom was with him and she wasn't home. And if she wasn't home, that meant that he was not okay. And it meant that what I knew of her helping me with my bedtime, with the bedtime snuggles and good nights and prayers, Abuelita was a different person. So there was a big change for me. There are circumstances that could give children bedtime anxiety. And I've seen it with my kids in foster care who are nine. Even with teenagers, I saw it. When my son in foster care, he was about to have a big thing the next day. Let's just say that he had court or he had a bio family visit. He would feel that bedtime separation anxiety. I remember that. He's an adult now. So what are the common mistakes that we make that, by the way, our little made and that didn't allow me to relax and finally settle down and say, okay, I'm going to be okay. I'm safe. And this is about what we focus on. Abuelita focused on stopping the behavior, on shutting down the behavior, on her final goal as an adult, which was Marcela, get in bed, fall asleep, I'm done parenting for the day. And one thing to the defense of Abuelita, she's older, so of course she was more tired than my mom, I imagine. So I don't blame her. But focusing on the behavior and I remember sounding like this, Marcela, why are you doing awake? Don't get out of your bedroom anymore. Go back to sleep. If I tell your mom you're not listening, she's not going to like that at all. Go to sleep. Did that help me? Absolutely not. If anything, it just added up to the anxiety of I'm not just missing my mom, but now I'm going to get in trouble and I cannot 
fall asleep, I need an adult, but I cannot access that adult because that adult is threatening me with doing something. So this is not a behavior to discipline. We don't discipline bedtime separation anxiety because if they do come with those behaviors of children getting out of their bed, asking for another sip of water, and all those things. And when it comes to discipline, I'm referring to consequences or telling them what thing is about to happen to them if they don't go to bed right now. That's what I'm referring to when I'm talking about discipline. Because for us to be able to fall asleep, we need melatonin. And melatonin is only produced when we're relaxed. And if we get threats of being punished or consequenced, or if, if you don't do this right now, this is going to happen to you, stay in bed. If what we receive goes against being relaxed, there is no way for a human body, especially a Leo human body, to produce melatonin to calm down and go to sleep. So instead of focusing on the behavior, Instead of focusing on your final goal of just go to bed and fall asleep, focus on a very, very special thing. And it is something that we work with our HIC parenting coaching clients in our six-month program. And it's related to understanding, number one, what the need is beneath our children's behaviors. And number two, in order to solve behavior, we need to meet that need first. And that's something that my mom did beautifully. So that's the parenting with understanding model. If we keep focusing on just shutting down behavior, shutting down behavior, shutting down behavior, then we are going to get more behaviors. If we are focusing on unveiling the need and addressing the need, then the behavior doesn't have a place to really be there because the need is met. So bedtime separation anxiety is one of these needs. Let's think for a little bit. When you have separation anxiety in general, what is your need? What do you need? You need to feel safe. And you need to feel connected. Exactly. That's how you solve bedtime separation anxiety. And you don't have to stay right next to your children until they fall asleep for the rest of the night. There are ways to meet that need so our children feel safe and connected. So what did my mom do? That was a very long two weeks for me and my abuelita because I was going to bed at a decent time. She was pretty regular when it came to my bedtime, but it just took me a long time to fall asleep. But then at two weeks, my mom came back with my brother. He's good. He's great. That was a long time ago, this story from when I was nine years old. And then Abuelita told her everything about it. And my mom, instead of consequencing me or telling me why were you giving Abuelita such a hard time? You should be grateful. Didn't you see that she was helping us? All those things. She did not do that. She said, mm, were you missing mommy? Huh? And I said, yeah. And then a little tear went down my face. And she said, okay, so I see that you need to feel safe and to feel connected. And this is something that for my mom, she was very ahead of her time on this regard because she's a baby boomer lady from Colombia who's never left Colombia. I mean, at that time, the chancla culture was the way to raise your kids over there. And she didn't do that. She applied parenting with understanding. So what happened? Instead of focusing on shutting down the behavior, consequencing me because of the behavior, and getting mad with me, she focused on building back that safety and that sense of connection, even if she was not right next to me because she didn't sleep next to me. 
In Colombia, the bedrooms are very narrow and the beds are narrow as well. So we both didn't fit in my bed or my bedroom. <laughs> so that first night, I still remember it. And I'm 37 years old. So that's one thing that I want to tell you. All the connected parenting, the parenting with understanding that you're doing today, those are the things that your children are going to remember for the rest of their lives. We did our bedtime routine and our bedtime routine was that I brushed my teeth and then I went to bed. She read a book for me. I was nine years old, so I was into chapter books and she read a chapter as usual. Abuelita tried to do it, but I was used to my mom. So she did it. She wrapped my back for about five minutes. And then she's something so magical. She said this. Okay, now we're going to say our good nights. And you know what, Marcela? Good night does not mean goodbye. I'm not going away. You will always be able to access me if you need me. So this is a good night. This is not a goodbye. I'm going to be there available for you. That gave me so much reassurance of my needs. Remember, I had bedtime separation anxiety and my need was safety and a sense of connection. And then I say, mom, so if I wake up in the middle of the night, can I go and get you? And then she say, yes, but I'm going to take you back to your bed. But yes, you can. Hmm. That was amazing. And I kept that in my heart to this day. When we moved to this house, my twins lived the same bedtime separation anxiety for the first week. And I told them the same thing. Because if it helped me so much, I knew it was going to help them. So what happened when she told me that? I felt so reassured and safe. And I felt secure of my connection with her. And it allowed me to see that bedtime was not a wall between us two. That I fell asleep and I stay asleep. With my twins, what happened? Because when I lived that process with my twins, they were not nine years old. They were three and a half years old. So what happened was with my twins... They woke up in the middle of the night, the first two to three days, and they went to look for me and daddy. They come, mommy, dada, mommy, dada. We took them back to their bedroom and I told them the same thing. If you need me again, come back for me. And I had kind of like, a, I would say, very fractured night, <laughs> the first three nights. But then what happened? They started to settle down. Because they knew that the connection was consistent. Because they saw that bedtime didn't separate us. Because they saw that bedtime wasn't a wall between them and us. Because they saw that they could always access us. Now they do things that I'm like, son, why didn't you wake me up? And they're like, I got it, mom. I got it. It was like two days ago. I went to wake them up for school. And then I saw a bunch of Kleenex all over their carpet floor. Those Kleenex had blood in it, like if they had a bloody nose. And then I said, okay, who had a bloody nose? And then Miguel said, one of my twins, yeah, it was me, mommy. I said, do you have a bloody nose in the middle of the night? And he said, yeah. I'm like, son, if you have a bloody nose, go get me, son. And then he said, mom, I got it. Don't worry. I know exactly what to do. And I get them often, not too often, but he sometimes he gets them and he figured it out. Why? Because he knows that if he feels he needs us, he can go get us. He absolutely can. So instead of focusing on the separation, on the you do this, then this, that, on the consequence, on shutting down the behavior, parenting with understanding focuses on the next connection because parenting with understanding is about meeting needs. Now, but Marcela, I don't know if that would work for me because we co-sleep. 
I still breastfeed my toddler or they sleep with their sister and their sister is loud and they, they wake each other up or they rile each other up and they don't settle down. Well, on this podcast episode, we covered one cause of bedtime struggles. If you need the deep training from a certified sleep coach, RHIC Parenting Certified Sleep Coach, with all the steps to turn and transform bedtime chaos into calm good nights, not goodbyes, then my encouragement for you is to access our Transform Bedtime from Chaos to Calm workshop. Over there, she covers the different causes of bedtime struggles and nighttime wake-ups. Maybe you have a child who will happily go to sleep, but he wakes up in the middle of the night and it's just hard to go back to sleep. Or maybe he's living night terrors or nightmares. You name it. If you are looking to have easier bedtimes, full nights of sleep, you can give yourself and your child that gift with our HIC Parenting Workshop. All you have to do is open the description of this podcast episode and the workshop is there or go to hicparenting.com. On the workshops tab, you can find it there. Now, my question for you is, how can you keep the next connection with your child to solve their bedtime separation anxiety? How can you do that? If you like this podcast episode, give me a positive review. Please open the description or go scroll down and leave us a positive review about this podcast. Let us know how it has helped you bring more peace to your home and raise emotionally healthy children. Follow us on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube at High Impact Club. And remember that it only takes understanding of your needs and your child's needs to transform your parenting. That's Parenting with Understanding. I'll see you next time. Thank you.